All right, so this is our uh, boot to gecko um, software. It's uh, although it's running on Samsung device, you know we're not partners with Samsung. <laughs> We've just put it on this device for show. But uh, the entire uh, interface is HTML5. Okay. So it's a Linux kernel and then um, the Gecko engine, which is the same engine that's underneath Firefox, thus boot to Gecko. Right. But this whole thing is a an HTML5 page, including things like the battery status and the network status. Okay. And so we're taking all that kind of device information. And we're lifting that up through APIs to the web and then standardizing that through the W3C. So the, the entire device capabilities are available to web programmers. So, let's figure that out. Um, this also is a web page. Um, you know, it looks very much like a phone interface. Yeah. But again, it's a web page pointing at other web pages, including, of course, a dialer. So, again, all HTML5, you can dial the phone. We have a telephony API that we proposed to the W3C so that. We can use this across all, all our browsers and propose it for all other browsers. Mm -hmm. um, because we're uh, deeply integrated into the phone without any other layers in between, um, we can do some pretty um, good. If I can get this to show for you, it's got to rotate. You'd think by now I'd be able to do this, but <laughs> doing it sideways. There we go. Um, so this is a web page yeah. running WebGL uh, mapped directly into the GPU on the phone. Okay. And so you can do some really good 3D graphics and 3D rendering on the phone. Um, we've also got you know the, the sort of obvious image galleries and whatnot. But again, it shows how fast an HTML phone, HTML5 phone can be. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, any HTML5 games are going to just run as you would expect them to. Um, and so, you know, all the great development that HTML5 people have been doing can run on the phone almost immediately. Um, video, um, you know, can run good, high quality video right on the phone. You can see that. You can see, those are the real Firefoxes that we've adopted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what else can I show you? Uh, one uh, question on the hardware requirements. Do you have any specifics yet on what kind of hardware this will function best? Yeah, so we've run it um, down to like a 600 megahertz processor with okay. 256 meg uh, okay. of RAM, so pretty low end uh, hardware spec. Okay. okay. Um, so it'll run really well down at that level. Oh, Obviously, okay. it gets better and better and faster and faster as you scale it up. Yep. But yeah, you know, it's uh, it's pretty lightweight because we don't have a lot of middleware. Okay. Um, in terms of applications, um, is again, like, this is HTML5 based, and basically you can easily just hit go to each site if you want to. But uh, how would this support apps in, in that kind of sense? Uh, with, yeah. We know with smartphones today. Right. So yeah. we're we're working also on standards around apps. So like there are manifest files that specify what apps are. Mm -hmm. And so like for apps like games, you would expect to see them as icons. Yeah. You would want them as icons mm -hmm. on your phone. Yes. And so uh, we have an identity technology and a marketplace technology, which will allow you to install apps on the device like, with one click. Okay. Okay. So you can either go to marketplaces. We're going to do a marketplace to show how it done, yeah. but we hope that lots of other people on the web run marketplaces or self-host self their apps, yeah. you can then download and install it to the phone with one click. Okay. Right. There is no real download process That's because it, you're, yeah. you're putting the icon and the URL on the phone. Yeah. Um, we're also encouraging app developers to use uh, app cache or local storage on the device. So, yeah, so that if you don't have a network connection, a lot of these apps can still work. Right? Obviously, if it's a social networking app, you need the network. Yeah. yeah. But if it's a, if it's a game, like Tower yeah. Jelly, it can be cached on the phone and started on the phone and work on the phone. Okay. How would a developer be able to update their app? Or like, would you have to download an update or would it, would it just kind of automatically happen? Yeah. Yeah. Next, next, next time you open an application. That's right. So with the app cache technology and whatnot, you can put a time on for when you want to check whether the, the URL has been refreshed. Mm -hmm. And so if you upload a new web page, um, the phones will all recognize that and download the new version of the, of the app. Right. So much like caching a website and then having it refreshed. Uh, one quick weird request. Could you show us the browser? Because I'm, I'm gonna, most, I'm gonna, most of our audience is going to ask. Yeah, they're going to ask. I do like this Firefox. So I'm going to show you the browser, but um, it's interesting in that uh, the the 
browser on this phone, so like again, the keyboard is HTML5 yeah. everywhere, right? Um, but because the entire phone is the browser, yeah. this little browser app is actually a JavaScript app running on top Sorry. of the phone. Oh, okay. okay. So we don't yet have like the full Firefox feature set there, okay. but we're working okay. on that. Because okay. okay. the next question I was going to ask is how do extensions translate over how does it um, sync to come and sync together. and all that kind of stuff. So sync, uh, sync is uh, fairly straightforward. We can sync their preferences yeah. and whatnot, and we'll be doing a lot of that. Okay. Um, I don't think we have articulated yet 100% what we'll do with add-ons and okay. whatnot, like how that would translate from a native browser yeah. okay. to boot to get-go. Okay. Um, but it's certainly something that we're considering and thinking through what, how we should do it. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.